In our last video, we crafted this berserk-themed helmet in leather. This time we'll be doing the build in foam, and I'll give you a few extra pointers along the way so that you can build your own. I'm using 2mm shape retention foam, and I'll be using a silver sharpie to see the trace lines better. I'll lay out the patterns and trace them one by one, taking care not to shift the pieces while tracing. And be sure to label each piece as you go, because many of them do look similar, but they're all different. These patterns are inspired by a manga called Berserk, and they are available at the Prince Armory Academy. This foam is available from a place called the Foamery, and as you can see we're using maybe a quarter of a single sheet, so the material cost is probably around $8, and this full build from start to finish can easily be done in one evening. Next I'll cut out all of the pieces using an X-Acto knife, but of course you can use whatever you have available. When all the pieces are cut out, I'll then transfer any reference marks into the foam by making perforations through the paper pattern directly into the foam, so any design lines or rivet placements should be marked. You can just use a silver sharpie to emphasize the marks, or use a pen to connect the dots and reference marks. To start putting the pieces together, I'm going to use some brads just like the kinds that you would use for binding papers together. These are just some that I found on Amazon. I'll start at the back of the helmet and work my way towards the front. Then I'll start attaching the side together. If you're one of our leather crafting students making this foam mock-up just to double check the fit before you start the leather crafting version, then congratulations, you're done. And if this mock-up fits just a little bit on the loose side, it should be perfect for the leather version. But if it's snug, definitely bump up the scale a couple of percent. If you're planning to finish this foam version and wear it as a cosplay, then there's still some work to do. It's up to you, of course, but I wouldn't rely on the brads to hold up long term. For display, no problem, but if you're going to wear it, you'll want to glue it. And before you do that, grab a pin and trace each layer inside and out. Then you can pull everything apart. Then you'll be able to apply your favorite contact cement to all of the marked edges. I believe I'm using barge in this condiment style squeeze bottle, but I also use wood weld contact cement. I'm using a silicone spatula to easily apply the glue, but any kind of spreader is fine.
and then as your glue starts to dry and get tacky to the touch, you can start carefully sticking the pieces together. I'll be using a heat gun here to both relax and soften the foam and to speed up the drying on the pieces that are not tacky yet. As you stick the pieces together, try to be patient and deliberate and apply each piece directly to the traced lines you outlined previously. If you want to shape the skull as I have, you'll want to apply some glue to the underside of the faceplate both around the eyes and the central head area. To start shaping the eyes, I will fold the inner rim over on itself towards the inside. The excess around the relief cuts at the corners of the eyes can be trimmed as needed. And now we can get to shaping the helmet. This step is optional, but if you want to get the ridged look, we'll want to bring the heat gun out and start working the creases along the guidelines at each point and the overlapping plates. This is probably a good point to talk a little bit more about the material. It can be found from the sponsor of this build, the Foamery. I found the foam to be very forgiving when it comes to the range of workable temperatures. The method that I settled on was to heat up a small section and then focus on refining the shape in that area and then holding it for a short bit until it cools enough to hold the shape. 
It is a little tricky to keep the shape isolated while working it because as you heat up one section, you might undo the shape of the last section. So that's why you'll see me make exaggerated folds and stretches in the piece as I work it. And I chose this particular foam in part for its shape retention properties, which means we'll be able to heat the foam up, mold it, and it will retain its shape as it cools. Another plus is that it's very affordable and it comes in large sheets, which is nice for bigger projects. And I chose the 2mm version to make it very lightweight and extremely easy to work with, but they also have other options available. I started using their products a while back and really liked them, which is why I suggested that we collaborate on some videos. With their support, we're able to bring a new medium to our channel and share some fun new builds and techniques with you. Check out the links in the description to pick up some foam for your next project, and you'll also be entered to win the complete pattern bundle for the Berserker series. Most of you know this channel for leather crafting tutorials, so a build like this is kind of experimental, and I'd be interested in your feedback. If you enjoy this content and you'd like to see more builds like this with foam or other crafting mediums, it'd be great if you could let me know by liking this video. The shaping of the face plate is pretty aggressive, so I want to double up the thickness of the front of the skull. I added these reference lines to help with the alignment when gluing the piece in. Then I'll apply more heat and do some initial shaping. One alteration I made to the pattern was to trim out the side section a little so that it matches the reference material a little more closely. But other than that, the core is done and we can move on to the detail phase. My goal for this project was to build something that anybody could sit down and knock out in a few hours with little to no prior foam crafting experience. So with that in mind, we'll be going for a super fast technique that will use a cheap wood burner. The manga reference always represents the suit of armor with a lot of lines and striations. It's probably intended as shading to indicate the black color of the armor, but I think that adding the lines deliberately will really help sell the look. The process is straightforward enough, I'll simply create a series of parallel lines in line with the reference lines and points. You can certainly spend more time on this and get better results if you wish, but overall I think it has a good balance of effort to visual impact with just this. In the last video, I mentioned that I was thinking about adding some lighting to the eyes, and some of you suggested that I do it for the foam version, and I do like that idea, but I'm gonna hold off for now because I have a project coming up that'll be a perfect fit, and I'll probably do a more specific video just for the lighting. Come chat with us in the new Foam Crafting channel in our Discord, and share your work in the Apprentice Gallery when you finish your build. Now we can move on to the painting. For this build, I'm going to paint this with a metallic silver effect. I know the reference is black, but I just did the leather version in black, so let's mix it up a little bit. You can always branch out and adapt the designs however you want. I'll be doing a very fast speed paint here too. To do this, I'll be using a metallic pewter paint and sponge it on as a rough base layer over the helmet first. Then I'll dab in some black acrylic paint to fill in and bring back the dark lines. And then I'll take some brighter silver paint and do another quick texture pass with a sponge along the layer edges. I'll 
also happen to have a bright silver paint that I use for other builds and custom projects, and I'll use that to get a little extra pop on the highlights. This particular paint is probably on the pricey side, so you may not want to use it, but a little goes a long way, so it's not a bad buy. For a final bit of trim, I'll add the domed brads to look like metal rivets. I'll try to dig up all of the links to the products that I've used here and add them to the description. If I forget anything, let me know. 